this is a how-to clinic. If you, um, we talked about paddles earlier. If you missed that one, this one I'm going to focus on. You know how to paddle. And um, my background comes from a little kid paddling downriver canoes, open you know downriver canoes, and that evolved into there's such a thing as Olympic sprint canoeing, where you kneel on one knee and you paddle on one side in lanes. It's like the drag racing of paddling. So I spent 20 years on the national team, was fortunate enough to go to four Olympic Games in um, 84, 88, 92, and 96. Um, I was introduced to stand-up paddling in early 2000, like 2001, 2002. So I got in pretty early before it was even racing existed in California. So Chuck Patterson, who's here, and I were like a couple of the first guys to show up at a paddleboard race. You know, it was a paddleboard race, and we were the only two guys standing up that everybody was laughing at. But now. They've all joined us now and they're doing it too. So. But anyway, uh, one thing I always like to say when I do a clinic is there's really no one right way to paddle a canoe, stand up paddleboard or a canoe for that matter. So what I'm going to teach you is what I've learned over the years of paddling different kinds of craft. Uh, um, but there's no one right way to paddle. Uh, but there's certain mechanics that I think are key and important that all top paddlers use. Um, the thing I try and emphasize is your hips and your torso are much more powerful than the arms. So all the paddling I do, I like to incorporate the biggest joints in the body, which are your hips and your lats, shoulders. If you think about it, there's only a certain pattern your feet can go in. Paddling, there's a lot of things that can go on where that paddle can go, where your hands go, where everything goes. You know, you're not sitting on a seat on pedals. You know, there's, biking is very technical too, don't get me wrong. But um, paddling are skills. So um, I break the stroke into four basic parts. The first part is what I call the catch. And that's when you set the blade. The, the one thing I want everybody to understand is we're not pulling our paddle through the water. People tell me, oh, I love your paddles. I just love the way they go through the water. If you're thinking that, don't think that. Think about setting your blade in the water and you're trying to pull yourself past it. Similar to planting ski poles and driving yourself past ski poles. <coughs> so if you think about that, you'll, that'll help you just in the way you understand it. Okay. Um, the other thing, so that that's the catch when you put it in. The next section, in, I'm going to go into each se section individually next. But the next section is the power phase, which is where you're actually driving yourself past that submerged paddle blade. The third phase is what I call the exit. Okay? Some people break it into three. I think just taking the paddle out of the water, there are some skills there. I like to break that into an individual step. Putting it in, power phase, taking it out. Okay? The next one is the recovery. You know, people think, well, that's pretty simple. You just put it back in the water again. But there are a lot of little things about the recovery that can make you more efficient, particularly like going into the wind and things like that. So, so we'll start with the catch. The catch, there's a, uh, there's a, uh, it's possible, particularly with stand-up, I find out to overreach. Okay, you don't need to put the paddle in up here. You don't need to be doing that. Okay, obviously the longer your stroke is, it's more efficient to a point. You want to work where your paddle is most effective. It's, it's most effective when the shaft is vertical to 10 degrees back like that. Okay? So if you overreach the stroke, it's not good. What I like to do is actually, with a normal canoe, you can come straight into the water. But what I like to do on stand-up these days, I'm finding that just a slight bringing it in like this. Watch my bottom hand's not going anywhere, top hand. Look at that. See where the blade goes? It goes from out of the water to in the water. Okay. So when you're coming back for the stroke, you're feathering it and you go right into the water. So you knife it in right about somewhere in between this P and this K is good. If you're reaching to here, you know, it's not good. If you're reaching past there, it's probably not so good. So I like to come in about here and get a deep blade. The very first thing you want to do at the catch is submerge, submerge the blade all the way. This point right here is what I call the heel of the paddle. If you're putting it in past that, you're putting it in too far. You don't. So, so right in here, but that's the key is to um, set the blade. And notice how my hips are a little bit forward, my shoulders. I'm going to show you something. I'm not going to move anything by my hips right now. See that? I'm not really moving anything but the hips. Now I'm going to move my shoulders. I'm not moving anything but my shoulders. Look at my arms. They're not bending. It's hips and shoulders. Hips and shoulders. All right? So when you set the blade, you want to have your hips forward, this pulling side hip forward, this lat, this shoulder forward, and this shoulder back. Okay? If you're in that position now, you're all like a loaded spring to take a stroke. Notice the bottom arm is straight at the catch. You don't want to put the paddle on your, your, your arms here. That's going to take power away from it right away. So you want to have a straight bottom arm, slightly bent top arm, okay? And like I said, you set the blade with that top arm. Okay? 
Now we're going to go into what's called the power phase. So we set our blade. I initiate the power from my hips, my body twisting. Notice I'm not doing this. Don't pull. Everyone thinks about paddling. I'm paddling. Or I'm, watch that. If you can see from the side, is my shaft blending? See how the blade, the board's turning a little bit? Hold on, John. Just keep the board at the top, yeah. Watch what happens. I'm going to put pressure in there. Watch what happens when I move my arm that way. See that? If your paddle is too much, come a little bit of slack, like stand right about there. Though. Okay. If your paddle is angled too far this way, it's going to go that way. Okay. Now, if your paddle is straight up and down, look at that. See how I'm pulling? It's not going anywhere. I'm going to pull that same way and start moving my hand. Now look where I go. See? Now, there's a trick to this too. If you paddle your board and you find you have to change strokes every four times, you're probably doing that. Okay. Keep this top hand over here. This is called loading the paddle. And you're also able to actually put body weight on the paddle. See it bending? You want to try and get some of that weight on the paddle. That's another advantage of having a slight angle on the paddle. It helps you put a little body weight on. Now I'm going to have John move over about there. When you're in a side wind like today, coming back for example, where you're having a paddle on the left a lot, you might feel that, or in the long race. Your paddle on the left a lot. When you get a chance to be on your right side, if you, this is called towing the blade out towing the blade in, okay? You tow it this way. Now watch. Now if John moves over a little farther, right about there, look, see that? I can actually pull the nose of the board towards my right side. And now watch what happens. I'm pulling, pulling. Now if I move this hand this way, now look. See that? See that? My top hand, all I'm doing is move my top hand. So that'll help you on that side. Then when you switch to this side, stay there. Stay right about there now. Come, come uh, right up there. Give me some slack. Okay. Now on this side, remember I told you not to do this? The wind's pushing you that way and you want to go upwind. Keep your hand this way and then you just, you're pushing the nose of the board over every stroke. So you're trying to control the nose of the, the board. The, the fin won't let the tail go where very far, but you can pull the nose over and then on this side, push the nose that way. So on this side, you're, does that make sense? Okay. That is drop the board. But generally speaking, you want your paddle straight up and down. So it's hips, body, arms. Hips, body, but look at that. My bottom arm doesn't ever come bend. The only time you bend your bottom arm is when you go to take it out. So now we're going to get into the third phase, the exit. At the exit, don't pull too far back. I see a lot of people pull back all the way to the tail of the board, OK? They're doing one of these, or they're doing one of these, OK? I see a lot of people do this. I come from canoe racing where I like to see rotation. If you open up your hips, it's a little easier to breathe. Some people have really strong, like you know, like one of these almost. But it's interesting. He's getting different leverage down here, and something that he's doing. First of all, he's very skilled. He's in very good shape. But uh, there's something to be said with that. But I prefer to do it by power, body rotation. If you look at a lot of the people that are winning races right now, they come from another, another discipline of paddling. One stroke, you know, that's a good uh, drill you can do to help your change. Okay, now, um, there's a lot of talk about positioning your feet on the board. General of thumb is your width of uh, stance should be about shoulder width apart. If you have some stability uh, issues and it's really rough outside, you know, spreading your feet apart a little bit can help. Some of the race boards nowadays are real skinny, so some of the people forces you stand a little tighter, you know, if you've got rails on the side. Uh, there's a couple ways to do it. One is to step back on the tail. If you watch uh, videos of the Battle of the Power, you'll see almost everybody steps back to the tail, get the nose of the board up, and whip around these little buoys real quick. I'm not going to show that on this dolly because the thing will fall off. But I'm going to show you um, moving around on your board takes some skills. So for people that haven't done a lot of that, I'm going to show you a really quick, easy way to turn around a buoy. So you're paddling along, and then uh, when I get to a buoy, so I'm going to come up to a left-hand turn. I, I try and aim straight at the buoy, or the buoy, just to the right side of the buoy. Come straight at the buoy, and what I'll do is, as soon as the buoy's coming by me, I do what's called a cross bow. I think I was one of the first people that started doing this in California and I, that I saw. Of course, I started it, but I saw a lot of people do this. It's pretty effective. John, walk all the way over to here now. So you got some momentum. Oop, wait. You have some momentum, right? Or give me some slack. So you're coming into a buoy turn, right? As soon as that buoy goes by here, you finish this stroke. You're going to reach over here. Okay, now walk all the way back here. What you do is you drop the paddle in the water right here, and you're going to bend your knees, 
put this hand in the backpack and look where the, the boards go. Now just pull it. Now when you get to here, cross, stay in this position, cross over the board, stay right there. Put the pound in the water right here and then watch. Stay down here. See that? I can get around a turn in just two strokes. One if I'm on a, you know, a, a surfing board. So that's paddling where the body rotation is a big part of it. You watch all Olympic kayak paddlers, it's all, it's all body rotation, okay? So, so now oh, exit. Play, Jimmy? Yeah, I'll use the other one for now. Taking it out, putting it in, taking it out. Well, this is not a very efficient way to take the paddle out of the water. What I like to do is, is use, it's hard to hold your arm up like this all day. How long can you stand like this, right? If you just drop your arm, look where the paddle goes. I'm not moving this hand at all. Here, I'll, I'll put it back here. See that? So what I do is I finish, drop this, point the thumb and just drop that hand. That paddle just flick out. I had somebody tell me I need to name one of my blades the flick, you know, it's like flick that thing out of the water. Um, if you notice the way we design our paddles are pretty thin, only about a half inch thick here. The reason for that is it does seem to exit a little cleaner, in my opinion. The blades are too full here, I have too pronounced of a dihedral. I noticed a little bit of drag coming out of the water. Okay. So you do that at the back of your I heel? Can, uh, yeah. Okay. I can paddle on the left side, by the way. Uh, people, uh, <laughs> I paddle Olympic canoe, so I'm more technical on my right side than I'm, I am on my left. But for those that didn't want to see it from this side, so it's catch. Now my hips are this way, okay? So it's hips, body, finish, same thing. You drop it with this hand, then the blade comes out, okay? Now the recovery, on the recovery, um, particularly in a headwind, it's important to do what's called feathering the blade. That's a term that kayakers use. Uh, and a kayak pal, if you notice, there's one blade this way, another blade this way. The only reason that's there is because of the feather. When this blade is going here, you don't realize, but if you're going eight miles an hour, that kayak paddle blade is going two to three times faster than that in the air. It's going 25, 30 miles an hour, depending on how good you are through the air. So drive 30 miles an hour when you paddle out the car door window. That's a lot of resistance there. Then turn like this. Make sense? So on the recovery, I think it's important to feather the blade. The way you do that is by pointing the thumb at the exit. A lot of people like to do it with the wrist, like this, which is fine. I tend to prefer to do it, let the paddle sort of spin in my hand versus, you know, doing it with a wrist. Just one less thing you're moving. Um, do they have any water? So, one stroke, you know, that's a good uh, drill you can do to help your change. Okay.